Come on, come on, get him. Hey, what's up guys, Chris Cohen here and welcome to another episode of Filmmaker Reacts, the series where we take a look at awesome videos or game teasers or anything that is super cool basically. Part 1, I react to them and in part 2, we dive deeper in to have a discussion about filmmaking techniques that we can pull from them as well as visual effects ideas. Now today, based on your recommendations guys, we're gonna have a look at Astartes game kind of like cinematic series which was created based on the video game but from a single guy it's his passion project and he made it and from what i've heard is really stunning and amazing and it's a five part episode but they're not that long so i thought let's just put them all in one video that way you don't have to look or wait for the next episode basically. With that said guys, today's video has been brought to you by myself and the Creatrix store. If you're a filmmaker and you want awesome assets, make sure to check the link in the description guys. We have the black box which has every product within the store but they're like fantasy assets, sound effects, my signature, cinema lads edition, Star Wars and many many things. So in case you guys would want to take a look, have the link in the description. And with that said, let's jump over to YouTube and take Look at our boy. So Astartes. There we go. Keep in mind while we're watching this that everything was made by a single guy. Animated, the story, the visuals, everything, which is really shocking. So this is episode one. Sit back, relax, and let's do this. One, two, three. Okay. Oh, it goes really quick. No way. What? Oh my god, the teasing. Oh my god, that was that was really good actually. No fading, no nothing. It just drops you in. And that is episode one. So basically they're getting ready to go to the planet. And it's more of a teaser than an actual episode, I would say. So let's go to part number two. He drops you right in. That was nice. Ooh. Is that their ship or the enemies? The transition. Man, the lighting. And the sound. Oh. oh! This is Ready to R. That was part two. This is really good, like... Oh, here we go. I think I've seen a part of this one. We have our bad guy. You can definitely see an improvement in rendering and overall quality. Okay, zero two. Have some music going on. 
Man, that sound! Oh! Flawless. That was okay. That last scene with the gun, the transition, and the blowout, that was perfection actually. Oh my god, I can't wait to go. This is the reaction part, so I'm really holding back from like pausing and going back and forth, but patience, it's gonna come after. So, part four. Man, how long did he, it take him to do this? We have some force action and eye effects. Ooh, what is going on? Nice. Ooh. Not happy. Come on, come on, get him. Oh my god, man. What is that sphere, man? Okay. What was that? Part 4. Each episode has progressively become even more awesome. I mean, again, one guy did all this, so mate. Amazing. If that goes to show, part 5 must be, like, insane. So, part 5 is the last one. Okay, we have a bit of a review. Alien ship? Number zero two, what happened to zero one? Man, the quality jumped again. I can tell. Man, the color scheme that he chose is amazing. The framing, the composition that he... Epic transition, that was epic. Is he like the general? He has like a nice cape, that looks pretty badass. Is he the guy from the first one? Yeah, from the previous one that was stuck in the force grip. 
and his eye turned. Man, if they're they're little exhaust things and made smoke. saying we have a slower build up now compared to the previous ones you know this reminds me a tiny bit Prometheus kind of like thing going on is that a statue or like the big man the way he transitions between scenes it's really good man Astartes. now I get it Is it like a mini planet? Like okay. Ooh. I bet he likes that. Is it like a source of energy? Like. Turn him? Did he turn him? Yeah, I think there's something up. Not good. Oh, what is going on, man? Is he someone else? Yeah, I don't think they're gonna make... Whoa. It swallows them? Continued. No. Did he get transported in darkness? Ooh, what is that? 
Okay, something happened there. Oh! Mother planet? Mate. Amazing. Stunning, amazing, epic, awesome. Out of words, that was exceptional. I can't believe a single guy made all this for, for, from the animation, the art style, the composition, the transition, the camera movement, the sound design, the action. Mate. Mate, that was sick. Okay, there were so many epic moments, especially from the third part. The first, the first episode and the second one were very, were very short, but they had some cool things. But from the third and now the fifth, oh my god. Okay, this is gonna be epic to dissect and go through it and kind of like see what we can pull off filmmaking wise and visual effects. So. I hope you guys are ready, get some water, popcorn, and let's do this. So very interestingly, guys, if you watched the last episode where I talked about the Witcher trailer, he did not blend in the sound. So he's giving us some very small text exposition here, and he just instantly drops us in. He did not smooth the fade of the image, nor did he um, introduce us to the sound first, and then the image. So he's giving us an establishing shot, basically, we're in space. Space station. That is really cool. He's going really fast to give us... So basically, we can already tell. Military operation, they're preparing to board something. There's a plan. A mission. Over the gun. That was epic. He's using quite tight shots. He's not using uh, a wide lens so far, I would say. 30 mil, if we were to replicate this in real life and just steady, steady camera movement. But he cuts quite quickly. So he goes through the information that we need to receive, basically. Yeah. They're getting ready. In terms of this kind of scenery, with the meteors, the planet, and kind of the foreground elements, we can actually pull this off in After Effects using Element 3D. That transition was epic. He could show the ship coming out and we could see the actual ship, but he wants to put us in the foreground as if we're on the ship and we're getting launched ourselves in space. Cool. That was episode one again. So now we are in space, fly through the meteor field. He's done a really good job with lighting the scene. The asteroid field is really tricky, but you can't pull it within After Effects. Going through, fighting. So we transition inside now. They breached. They have to fight those guys. <laughs> Oh man! In terms of magic flashes, guys, I have done a very advanced tutorial on a gunshot. It was a handgun gunshot. If you guys want to check out the tutorial, it's pretty cool and it goes through very advanced techniques when it comes to the flare, the lighting simulation, the shell, eject, the gun itself, as well as some smoke assets. So if you want to know how to do awesome gunshots with an After Effects, there is a tutorial in the Critics channel. <laughs> Oh man, so gory, in a good way. So if we go frame by frame, the bullet itself is basically a light solid with a glow effect on it that we can do with an After Effects. Now this is really cool. If we had an actual real life actor with a helmet, you could paint 
those cracks and the light coming through them because there is an effect within the blur section that's called radiant blur I think and if you apply that blur effect in a light solid then it, depending on the direction that you're going to put the cursor of the effect itself it's going to shine light and it's going to replicate that look the blood we can do with a blood mist asset so that's really cool as well they're just getting hammered okay cool these are the bad guys this is our main thing. Um, so far, I'm gonna let this play, but I think I've realized something. Building tension with the sound design. He did bleed the sound here, did you see? In the first episode, it was black and he just dropped the image and the sound at one point. Here, when he cuts to blood, he lets the sound bleed in first and then the image. It's a very cool technique to do. So let's talk a bit about cinematography. Now cinema cinematography has a lot of variants to it but I'm gonna focus on the use of camera movement. Now again this is CGI so he has complete freedom to move the camera wherever he wants but what I've realized from all five episodes was he chose to basically have a very fluid camera movement as if one would use a gimbal and he compensated with the action and kind of give you that impact by using a lot of cuts. I've realized that sometimes a smooth camera movement is not always the best. Here it works really well. On the, in the God of War short film I wanted to look as a game as well. So the entire thing was shot in a gimbal even though during the fight scenes there was a lot of action going on. The problem that I've realized was happening when I was editing it in post was that a lot of the impact and the essence of the fight was lost because the camera was way too smooth and kind of just flew through space. It did look like a video game, but I felt that the impact of the fight scene was not as high as it could be. The way that he's going around that is that he's using great cuts to keep the action and the momentum really high so that is really cool to see oh, pop on. it's getting wasted the color choice is amazing i want to talk about color in a bit later on episode four you can see the the attention to detail look how in the foreground where the gun sits when he pulls the trigger the smoke just goes <laughs> And you can see the second guy right there. I didn't see him at first. That was really cool. This was one of the best scenes I've ever seen. Not this one. Oh my god. We can do the lasers, basically animate a white solid with a mask that looks like a laser and through the duration of a couple of frames you move that mask depending on if you want it to come towards the camera or it moves away or it moves up and down. Upon impact you can use spark assets to kind of play through. It's funny because lasers basically look like lightsabers and if you can make an awesome lightsaber you can make an awesome laser as well because they're basically the same thing. There is another awesome tutorial on an advanced lightsaber on the channel as well. That. And then I'm gonna... <sighs> so, notice here, he shows us the gun, but it does not cut. If I go frame by frame almost, the camera follows the gun as he aims down the corridor and then it shoots. And once upon it shoots, oh my god, look at this design made. I am working on kind of a sci-fi VFX pack and I want to replicate this kind of gunshot. So basically, see how there is a very slight change in scaling and see how if we watch the helmet, how it goes back and that basically, that very small scaling jump trigger that goes like, boop, it gives us a very cool kind of like, mm an extra oomph to the visuals when it comes and when you marry everything together with sound we have a very epic gun shot basically i want to hear it again so we have a trail we have a flare and then the explosion happens so if we play it again with sound there is a bit of delay because we're further away from the effect 
So basically, if you were to replicate this, you can study this and say, okay, first I need to make the trail of the sci-fi gun, then I'm gonna show a very quick flare going up, and then the explosion is gonna occur. It's almost as if it goes like... Woo, woo, Let's move on to now the best episodes, which is number four with the fight scene, and then number five. Number five is mostly focused on story with some very cool visuals, okay. Here we have bird's eye view shot, usually pulled off with the drone, and basically is an amazing kind of shot to get because it's as if you're giving the viewer the entire arena of what and where characters are in space and kind of like looking over them and kind of like zooming in them as if we're approaching them from above and we kind of can tell as if it was a chess match and we can tell what's everything going on as if you ease them into it. Okay, so we have the bad guys. That is a really cool effect. It's very subtle, but sometimes the subtle effects are the best. So far, I think it's time. That was a really cool shot. Again, do you see how we have a very fluid, smooth motion over camera movement, but we just cut through and through? There was never a shaky moment where the creator was shaking things up to make things look more epic. Because he doesn't need it, he has done an amazing job. So they're loading their guns, again this is called hot heads up display, you can use it to kind of make like Iron Man effects or when it comes to sci-fi weapons. Those are basically 2D solids and you one needs to design them, but because they're hard elements, you can get away with 2D elements and kind of position them in 3D space. And then with glow effects and colorization, you get this cool effect. It's not the easiest thing to do, but we can do it. This. This was amazing. So, we have the main guy. We have a shock wave in the bottom, as well as a shock protection sphere, where it stops the bullets. This... He might actually has gotten some live VFX assets and composed them in because you can tell in his feet it almost looks as if the asset was placed on top which is totally fine, it works and it happens so quickly so we can definitely do the bubble effect within After Effects this would be a solid and we will play with mask and feather values the outer mask we would use a very small feather but for the inwards mask, we would further it substantially to create that grading effect. And when it comes to the bottom, a shockwave asset will work quite well. In terms of the bullets, since the camera is remaining relatively static to the dimensions of the space, we can use 2D assets with a few kind of like afterburner effect. And if you match a 2D asset of a bullet with that afterburner going on, and then you compose all of them in this scene because the camera stays relatively in one plane, we can pull everything that you see in this effect, in this scene. <sighs> There's so many things, so I'm trying to not go overboard, but this, we need to talk about this. So he pulls the trigger, and there's a bit of delay, like we can see the gun going off, but we can't see it here, so the gun shot happens for a second time, and this technique is used a lot during fight scenes. So let's say in one frame, in one scene, you would see the guy throwing the punch and the punch kind of gets an, in an impact. But in the next shot, the punch is going to start here and you're going to see the impact for a few frames again. Now, in the eye of the viewer, that happened so quickly, but that is done in order to kind of give the viewer's eye a bit of time to adjust to what's happening. Boom. Okay, this scene right here, can be done within After Effects. I've done something similar in the God of War scene where the bad guy does a shockwave repulsation effect and Atreus kind of falls back. Now, it was kind of the same technique. So basically, you have the gunshot, which is, again, we can use an optical flare to simulate the gunshot going in camera. And he's using a ton of blur. Here, everything is blurred, basically, to simulate the impact. And now we have the main antagonist kind of turning and a shockwave is happening in front of him. You can do this two ways. One, you can have him filmed in front of a green screen, you, so you do not have to trace him out using rotoscoping. scoping. Or you can film it normally and rotoscope him for a couple of frames. It is tedious, but it's gonna work. You remember the Sorcerer's Sorrow VFX short, where uh, the main 
character kind of creates a spell and a gate opens of light opens in front of him it's kind of similar with this i'm gonna have it pulled up but basically it was shot in front of a green screen and basically you just key out the green and then you can do a lot of assets putting assets in and composing them in and then using glow effects light effects motion blur and a lot of things like that i will make a tutorial on that because it was the same technique that i used for kingdom hearts when kingdom hearts opened up in the air <sighs> epic i don't know how we would use this in real life but if you had a mask or a helmet this kind of shot we would use a 2d map of a glass cracking and we would compose it in on top of the mask and then we would play around to kind of make the effect go <laughs> if you see here the camera again does not move a lot in relation to the eye so when it comes to visual effects you can do a lot by using 2d effects and all you have to do really is to not move the camera a lot Man, that was epic. Boom. So in this one, in terms of filmmaking, um, he has an amazing scene and he's using a lot of cuts to make the impact of them as amazing as possible. So he has the knife, the knife goes in. The composition of course is perfect. Now we do need to keep in mind that this is done all in a computer and I'm saying this in the sense that he had full control in terms of the framing on the shot. When we have to go out there and we have a camera in hand and very violent actions are happening, it's sometimes very hard to keep them all in frame. Really cool. And they're screwed. Yep. Oh. I want to talk to you guys a bit of color. Now, when it comes to sci-fi, whether we want to look at Aliens or Oblivion or any sci-fi movie, they use a lot of blues. Cyan, blue, and the contrast is usually red, orange, or purple. But I think it's important to notice that it's not just the camera movement that he chose, it's not just what's in front of the frame, it's not just the coloring, it's not just the sound. Everything that comes together creates a unison of imagery and sound and we as the viewer are just in awe of what we're watching and we are basically entertained. So in terms of colors, when it comes to sci-fi, I have tried to kind of do the same. You don't always need to follow, but do keep in mind that cyan blue with contrasting red and orange is usually the way to go when it comes when it comes to sci-fi. If I had to give an example, that would be the Paragon Awakening scene where I'm in the tube and my, the eyes go open and you can see a lot of kind of like bluish hues and greenish hues and then the eyes pop up, etc. This is a stark contrast by the way. If you remember in the first episode, the corridor that they were walking through was very clean and clinical. This one is the same kind of corridor scene but it has just so much more detail and character. See, uh, when we talked before a bit of color, you can see it here as well. You have a great gradient of blues, cyan, and kind of green stones, but then the light elements are orangey. Really cool. Actually, I want to talk about this scene because I was very surprised. He takes us through the corridor all the way out and we're seeing this. But at the same time that he gives the viewer the time to kind of process this element that they've been fighting for, he's, do he's doing something extremely clever. Basically here, instead of cutting, he just takes the camera and moves it a bit lower to show us our point of interest. This is another bird's eye shot. But look at the composition of the scene. We have perfect black, a transition in between, and then a light scene. This give, tells us that our characters are going into darkness, basically. And almost uh, it's almost as if they're swallowed by darkness, which is a really cool 
imagery. Literally, walking into dark. Because in 3000, 4000, whatever this takes place, we do not have extremely powerful flashlights. Awesome. It's really cool that in episode 4, the guy with the eye, that he kind of had some damage in it, He's very prominently in the shots now, and we can tell who he is because of that eye. Brilliant. It's as if you give the, your car. Remember in Star Wars Force Awakens, when in the beginning Kylo Ren was going through the village, our stormtrooper that we were supposed to care for, Finn, there was blood in his helmet to differentiate him. You can see kind of like the te techniques that filmmakers use to help the audience and tell the story. This just gives me Prometheus vibes, honestly. Really amazing. I love this scene, by the way. The sphere levitating in the center, the fog elements that he introduced, and just the composition is beautiful. In order to pull off the sphere, it would have to be a 3D sphere. It has a very interesting texture on it, that sphere. It's kind of goldish with a map, but uh, Video Copilot has done the orb plugin, so you could use that plugin, find a very cool texture, and Video Copilot has material textures that are very interesting, so you could kind of pull this off actually, I think. Track your scene with uh, After Effects 3D track or Mocha, then compose it using orb and take it from there. Some things to think about. <laughs> I've done an effect, the Kratos Leviathan Axe effect in God of War Rise of the Sun and there is a technique that I want to talk to you in the coming weeks in a tutorial about how you can trace texture in a way and create this effect or the God of War Leviathan uh, effect with the runes of the axe glowing. This is epic but we've mostly talked about most of these effects. Again, here, when it comes to the scene, you have a scene playing, and then you had a HUD overlay. Again, this is designing HUD elements in 2D and then portraying them in 3D space with glow effects and things like that. So we have a bit of transition here. I've tried to do something similar. Oh, what was it? Sephiroth's Fire Blaze? Oh no, it was from Sorcerer's Sorrow again where I take the elixir and kind of have a vision and it was kind of the similar, like cutting through a lot of scenes with using a lot of elements. I like how he slightly changed the color palette as well. Now we have mostly cyan to greenish tones where before it was mostly cyan and blue. Then he went, actually there is, yeah, here we go, frame by frame. So this is very interesting, this is very impactful, but l let's see how he pulled the appearance out of nothing. So we have the scene, and we would have to use a clean plate for this one. So we would set up the camera, let it record for a bit, get our clean plate, and then the actor would come in, and we would have him jump. So there is a bit of displacement, which we can do with the bulge effect within After Effects. I've actually used this in the Harry Potter spell tutorial. So we have a bit of a bulge effect going on right there. Then we have just the shadow with a lot of radial blur, the effect that I talked about before. He appears very suddenly. Then everything turns to... Ooh, this is interesting. Everything turns to black and then the light comes back. And then he just falls. And upon falling, there is a camera shake, which we can definitely do. Right? When both knees touch, boom. Yeah, we have a shake and a bit of smoke coming up and then he falls. Let's see it all in real action, so now that we've seen how it's done. Awesome! This is really cool. This is definitely doable. And... Ugh. Where is he? Yeah. Needless to say, you need 3D again and green screen work to pull this off. The artistry though, 
Amazing. We can do the particle effects. If you have particle assets, create a store. Ooh. Okay guys, so that was this week's Filmmaker React episode when it comes to the Astartes, episode 1 to 5. This was based on your recommendation guys in the comment section below by a big margin from last week's Witcher episode. Do make sure to let me know in the comments guys any ideas or any trailers or concepts or short films that you would like me to react on and kind of dissect so we can have a discussion about filmmaking tips and visual effects. This was awesome, really enjoyable. There are a lot of effects I would like to try to pull off for you guys and make tutorials on. Stay safe, stay creative, make sure you check the links in the description and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, stay creative.